Now, I'm often accused of trying to bring Europe into everything I talk about. Quite wrong. The BBC don't like this, by the way. The BBC insists that Europe is about obscure treaties and it doesn't actually interest anybody. And one of the arguments we've tried to push over the last few years is that actually when we talk about Europe, what we're talking about is already 75% of the laws that are made in this country every single day. There's a map being circulated around this meeting this evening, which you'll see the FT printed in 2008. It was agreed back in 2005 that a series of trans-European railway networks would be built and that Britain was part of that proposal. It is something that the British government signed up to. It is something that the MEPs of the day thought was a very good idea. And if you study the map, you will see a remarkable similarity to the proposed route for HS2, with, of course, HS1 having already been built in Kent. Now, I'm not saying that HS2 is purely happening because of the European Union, but I am saying it's an important part of the thinking that has gone in to that original Labour Party decision, something which is now, it seems, enthusiastically supported by the Conservatives and by the Liberal Democrats. I think there are some very good reasons why HS2 should not be built. I come from Kent, and Kent has faced this problem of what to do with vast flows of traffic and people. In fact, no, no county in the country has faced a bigger problem since the Channel Tunnel opened and this massive traffic. And what, what the authorities in Kent did was they built the new M20 right next to the old A20. And next to that was the original, very slow, somewhat pitiful railway line down the Kent coast. And so when they built the high-speed rail link, HS1, they built it bang next to the existing railway track. And so you've got the two new corridors through Kent and the two old corridors through Kent, all within a maximum width of half a mile. So yes, that part of Kent is completely blighted, but I think Kent County Council actually deserve full marks for doing it the way they did it, and for, and for national government allowing them to make those decisions. Now let's think about the London to Birmingham route. We already have, do we not, the M1 and the M6. We already have, do we not, a railway line. So if we did need to build HS2, if there was a real burning economic or business reason to build it, which incidentally I don't think there is, but if we did need to build it, you wouldn't build it on this route, would you? Because this route is miles away and is blighting a whole a, a massive landscape that doesn't need to be touched at all. So I think if you had to build it, build it there, build it next to the existing railway line. But actually, I don't think that a country that is absolutely on its uppers financially as we are, um, and please don't believe the government when they tell you they're reducing the deficit, they're not. They're not, because growth has collapsed in, in, in our economy, um, and we're still borrowing £140 billion pounds a year more than we're earning, so our public finances are in one hell of a state, albeit Gordon Brown had a bit to do with that, didn't he? <laughs> I mean, quite how he could have sold all that gold. Two hundred I mean, don't start me off, it makes me too upset. But particularly as a former metals trader, but there we are. Um, you know, why are we spending? Why are we spending £34 billion pounds on a project like this at a time when we're completely and utterly skipped? It is madness. And yet, because of this merger that I talked about earlier in this speech, there's no opposition, is there? Because they all support it. Labour, Lib Dems, Conservatives all support this mad, mad white elephant. And Chris, I have to say, you're right. The reason UKIP exists, the reason we're here, is that the old ways of doing politics have disappeared because they all merged on this and so many other issues. Thank <laughs> you.